here I am, I'm down on my knees again, surrendering all, surrendering all, find me here, Lord, as you draw me near, I'm desperate for you. Desperate for you, I surrender. Drench my soul as mercy. Like a rushing wind, Jesus breathe within. Lord, have your way, Lord, have your way in me. Like a mighty storm, stir within my soul. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. today, whether you're decided to join us in the morning at 10 a.m. or 6 p.m. Uh, the kids met at 9, so uh, maybe you're, you're a young person watching right now and you were here at 9 already, so you've already enjoyed the uh, kids' church. So please make sure you make it to that, kids. I know it's early in the morning, but I think most kids are up at 9. So uh, anyways, we're here at 10 and we're uh, ready for a new day. We got a message prepared and uh, so many good things going on. And it's so great that summer is upon us now and, and the temperatures are getting up there and uh, we can't swim in the lake yet, but I'm sure that as we go through the different stages uh, and uh, stage two or three, we'll be able to get wet again. Uh, my dog's been in the water, <laughs> so uh, that's been good for him. 
<laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, so we got a message prepared for you. And, uh, oh, and thank you so much for, for supporting us with your, with your uh, offerings and your donations and, uh, and also for your prayers. Oh, boy, we need your prayers so much. And we can't do any of this without God. So thank you for uh, praying, and we're praying for you guys. We'll get through this. We'll all, get, we'll all be together soon, hanging out, doing coffee time and, and uh uh, fellowshipping and just all those great things so god bless you um yeah that's it so hey if you want to give there's two ways to do that one is uh, donations at hopefortoday.ca and if you don't like all that technology stuff you can just drive on over or walk on over to the fellowship and and drop your uh donation through the slot there and uh, that helps us to continue the ministry here in Georgina, reaching out to all those uh, that, uh, especially now, are probably looking for answers. And, well, we know all, all you really need is Jesus. So uh, we just thank you for, for being with us and supporting us and being part of the team. Anyways, without uh, further delay, here's today's message. Good morning or good evening, depending on which service you're at. I know, that's getting old, isn't it? Uh, welcome to Hope for Today Fellowship. Welcome home, everybody. It's good to have you all back here. Um, I'm hoping that you're watching this on Sunday because I, I don't know about the other, maybe some people think it's silly to have that little chat room thing going on, but uh, I enjoy chatting with you. I enjoy, we, sometimes we goof around, sometimes we just, uh, we just have a good time chatting and I appreciate that so much. It's nice to know you're all still alive. So um, um, I have to make a little correction what Pastor Collins said because I have been out swimming. It's 72 degrees in Cooks Bay and uh, it's beautiful, nice and fresh and uh, been enjoying that. So Cooper and I have been out in the water, <laughs> Collins' dog. So uh, thank you, Pastor, um, for the introduction we are continuing on in our series on on living a godly life and uh, being godly is to be godlike and uh, so today we're going to start in first timothy chapter 4 verses 6 to 8. first timothy 4 verses 6 to 8. if you put these things before the brothers you will be a good servant of christ jesus being trained in the words of faith and of good doctrine that you have followed. Have nothing to do with irreverent, silly myths. It, that, that word myth, it, it comes from the Greek word mythos. Mythos, it's, 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 it's the, uh, to take the beliefs that we have and, and, and uh, use them in a negative way, a fanciful, untrue, deceptive, those beliefs that people have. Uh, another way of putting it would be to say um, the old wives' tales. We say that sometimes. Uh, they go against godliness. They go against truthfulness and, and the truths of Jesus Christ. And, and, and that needs to be avoided. We need to be uh, in the truth, not in, in silly myths. Um, Instead of listening to silly myths, uh, Paul goes on as he's talking to Timothy and he says, rather train yourselves, train yourself in godliness. For while bodily training is of some value, godliness is of value in every way. It, it holds the promise for the present life and also for the life to come. That's beautiful. Anyone here, is there anyone here who has ever trained for, for some sporting event. Anyone here? Obviously there's nobody because it's only Colin and I here. <laughs> so, but, but anyone who has trained for anything, whether it's uh, hockey, figure skating, um, soccer, any kind of sporting events, uh, at the Olympic events, I don't know anyone personally that's, that's been uh, training for that, but we all have trained for some sports or something and we all know that that real training only happens with commitment. I, I did grow up um, with some friends who were into figure skating. Um, they weren't guys, they were, they were women, and, and, and occasionally I would go and watch them because figure skating is not my thing. But uh, 
I, 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 I know that they used to get up like 4 o'clock in the morning, go to figure skating practice, and then after that, go to school. Um, that, that takes commitment. That takes commitment. And, and so when we, when we talk about training, we're talking about daily training. It, 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 it's, it's, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And without commitment, we're not going to achieve anything. So, so similarly to sports, no one ever becomes godly without a commitment to godliness. No one, no one ever becomes godly without a commitment to pay the price of daily training, spiritual training. Philippians 3, 12 to 14. Look at that. Philippians, Paul writing to the church in Philippi, and he says, Not that I have already obtained this, or am already perfect. Paul's saying, I'm not perfect. I'm not there yet. But I press on to make it my own. I, I work, I train, I press on to make it my own. Because Christ Jesus has made me his own. But brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. I, Paul even says he's not there yet. He's not there yet. But one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind me and straining forward to what's ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. And then, and then look at 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 5 to 7. For this very reason, make every effort to supplement your faith with virtue, and virtue with knowledge, and knowledge with self-control, and self-control with steadfastness, sticking to itness, and steadfastness with godliness, and godliness with brotherly affection, and brotherly affection with love. There's a price to godliness. Godliness doesn't come free, and it's not a cheap price. The verb train, which Paul deliberately uses here, implies persevering, painstaking, diligent effort. Paul was well aware of the total commitment that the young athletes had, had committed to, the, the, the way that they worked, the way that they trained themselves to, to win a crown, a crown that wouldn't last. They worked that hard for a crown that wouldn't last. Here we are working for a crown that will last forever, not just in this present life, but in the life to come. Godliness that has value for all things. And, and Paul urged Timothy, and he urges us today to make that kind of a commitment, the kind that's necessary to train ourselves to be godly. 2 Timothy 4.8 Henceforth there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day, the day he comes, the day he returns. And not only to me, but also to all who have loved his appearing. All of those, those of us who are looking forward to Jesus Christ returning. We're looking forward to seeing him face to face. We're going to get a reward. We're going to get a crown. Our training is useless, absolutely useless, without the help of the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who teaches, rebukes, and corrects. It's the Holy Spirit who does that through the Word of God. That's how He works. It's the Holy Spirit who holds us accountable to the highest standards of excellence. If we're not consistently reading the Word of God, then the Holy Spirit can't teach us. The Holy Spirit doesn't just give you knowledge. He, God has given us His Word. He's given us the Bible. And He says here, read this, and while you read it, my Holy Spirit is going to teach you. That's how it works. So if we're not consistently reading the Word of God, we're in big trouble. We're not going to learn anything. For His teaching is through the Word, through the Bible. And if we wish to grow in godliness, we must read the Word consistently. Consistently. Look what Paul said to Titus in Titus 1.1. Paul, a servant of God 
an apostle of Jesus Christ, for the sake of the faith of God's elect and their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness. Their knowledge of the truth, which accords with godliness. We have to have a knowledge of the truth in order to be godly. We can't grow in godliness without knowledge of his truth. We can't. This truth is found only in the Bible. But it's not just academic knowledge. It's not just Bible facts. That's not what we're looking for. It's the spiritual knowledge that's taught to us by the Holy Spirit as he applies the word of God, the truth of God's word, into our lives. The Bible speaks of a knowledge that puffs up. Look at 1 Corinthians 8, verse 1b, the end of verse 1. It says, we know that all of us possess knowledge. We know that. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. The type of knowledge actually works against our training in godliness. This type of knowledge, this spiritual pride, it, it tears down our godliness. It doesn't, it doesn't help us grow. You can, you can have tons of knowledge. But unless you have the Holy Spirit teaching you, it's not going to help. We, we all know people who know their stuff. Man, I, I talk to some people and they're sitting there and they're, they're whipping out chapters and verses. And, and they're, they're reciting whole, whole paragraphs of the Bible. In fact, I know a guy who, who, can, who can do a whole book of the Bible. I know another guy who knows the whole Bible. I'm crazy. I, I have trouble with one verse. But, 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 but these guys, they can whip out all this knowledge. But you look at their life, and they might be living a righteous life, but they're not godly people. Not always. They're not. It's not how much you know. It's how much you've learned by the teaching from the Holy Spirit through the Word of God. Many people are orthodox, they're, they're upright, they're righteous people, but they're not devoted to God. And you can, you can recite the whole Bible, but if you're not devoted to God, it's worthless. Only the Holy Spirit can pry us loose from such positions of false confidence. So we must sincerely look to him for his training ministry as we seek to grow in godliness. That's the only way it's going to happen. So we know that we must have commitment. And we know who the coach is. But we also need practice time. This is how, this is how it went with sports. You remember? It, you, you, you knew you had to be committed. You met the coach. And you know what he expected. But then you needed practice time. It's during practice time that we learn our skills. The skills that make the athlete competitive in his or her sports. And it's a practice time that as a follower of Jesus, we develop the skills for living a godly life. It's in practice time. There is no shortcut to Olympic level skill. There's no shortcut. And there's no shortcut to godliness. There's, you can't just become godly. You need to practice and to grow. It's a day-to-day -day commitment to the teachings of the Word of God as taught through the Holy Spirit. It's this that will enable us to know and to grow in godliness. We've got to practice godliness. We must practice the fear of God. It's the fear of God that's the foundation of devotion to God. We talked about that. We talked about that. Remember from our past lessons that, that, that the essential ingredients of the fear of God. We, we talked about three things. The correct concepts of God, knowing who God is. If you don't know who God is, then you don't really know how to be godly. You don't know how to be devoted to him. You... you, you if, if, I was, if I was married to my wife for the past 39 years, like I have been, and, and I didn't know her, I, 
I knew very little about her. How would you feel about our relationship? Would you look at us and go like, why, why have they been together this long? They don't even care about each other. They don't know each other. And how would I know what my wife expects? And how would she know what I expect if, if, if we don't know each other? We need to know God. We need to have a correct concept of God. Some people have a different concept. Some people have, have designed God to, to, to meet their circumstances. To, to, they, they've made their own God because they don't know enough about who he really is. Number two, we need an incredible sense of the presence of God. We need to know that God is present all the time, everywhere. Number three, we need a constant awareness of our obligation to God. What does God expect? If we have some comprehension of God's infinite holiness and his hatred of sin, and, and, and we mix that together with our, our sense of God's presence in everything we do and everything we say and everything we think, then such a fear of God must influence and motivate us in the way we live. If you know that God is, is with you all the time and he's, he's, he's seeing what you see and he's thinking, he hears what you're thinking, wouldn't you be a little bit more careful about what you were thinking, about where you were going, about what you were watching on TV or on the internet? Such a fear of God must influence and motivate us in the way that we live. We need to seek to have a deeper relationship, a deeper devotion to God. We've already seen how a solid devotional life is a prerequisite to us in training in holiness, in godliness. We can't train in godliness if we don't have a deep devotion to God. You, you won't have the commitment. Psalm 119.10. Psalm 119.10. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. To be born again is also to say that we have a basic devotion to God. It's impossible for a follower of Jesus to not have a basic devotion to God. God has given us everything that's required for life and godliness. It's all been given to us. So yes, we as followers of Jesus Christ, we all have a basic devotion to God. God-centeredness is the foundation of our spiritual lives. However, we must work at growing this devotion. This devotion needs to grow. We are to train ourselves to be godly. As followers of Jesus, we will do whatever we can to grow in godliness. Our hearts will grow cold of the things of God if we don't grow in godliness. You can't just become a follower of Jesus and then just sit back and relax. That's not what happens. You need to grow. To grow in our devotion to God is to grow in the fear of God, the love of God, and the desire for God. As we grow in all three of these areas, we try to grow equally. You, you can imagine if, if we were just growing in the fear of God and not, not growing in the love of God, just the fear of God, we get to that place where eventually we think God is far off and he's not concerned about us and he's not concerned about having a relationship with us. We would just be all tied up in this fear of God, not understanding how his love mixes in with that fear. If we, if we concentrated too much on just the love of God, we see this in a lot of churches today. God's not offended by my sin. He, he doesn't mind when I sin because, because he's a God of love. Love covers a multitude of sin. Therefore, I can do whatever I want and it doesn't offend God. I need to be balanced. I need to know the fear of God. I need to understand his characteristics. I need to understand his omnipresence. I need to understand that, that, that those three essentials for the fear of God, I need to know those three essentials because if I don't, I will be out of balance and I will, be, I will have a wrong concept of who God is and, and how he works. My whole life will be a mess.
If we are to be godly followers of Jesus, we must be well balanced in our growth in all three areas, the fear of love, the love of God, and the desire for God. Something else we must remember as we seek balance is that these three areas, these three areas, we are very dependent on the Holy Spirit to bring about this growth in us. This doesn't just happen. We need the Holy Spirit to bring about the growth if we are willing to let Him and work along with Him. It will happen. But if we just sit back and, and, and expect God to do this, it's not going to happen. We'll be off balance. We'll be wrong. Please note, please note, if we are committed to the practice of godliness in our lives, then our prayer life will show it. We'd be asking God to help us to increase our fear of Him. We'd be asking Him to deepen our understanding of His great love. We'd be, we'd be asking Him to make us desire Him, to desire fellowship with Him even more. Our, our prayer life would show what's in our hearts, how we feel. Oh God, I need to fear you more. God, I need to desire you more. I need to fellowship with you more. Our prayer life will show if we're working at that commitment to practice godliness. We've discussed how important the Word of God, the Bible, is in all of this. We've discussed that. If we don't read our Bibles, we will not increase in the fear of God. Because we won't understand who He is. We won't, we won't understand His love for us if we don't read the Word of God. And for sure, it won't make us desire Him if we don't read the Word of God. When it comes to fearing, reverence, reverencing God, there are certain passages that are very helpful. When you're reading the Word of God, I'm going to put up a couple here for you. When we're speaking of God's holiness, read Isaiah chapter 6. Read Isaiah chapter 6. And you'll understand God's holiness even more. Read Revelation chapter 4 about God's holiness. Number two, when we speak of God's greatness, read Isaiah chapter 40. Number three, when we're speaking of God being all-knowing and present everywhere, we've got to make sure that we read Psalm 139. Number four, when we're speaking of the majesty of Christ Jesus, look at Revelation chapter 1 and Revelation chapter 5. When speaking of God's love, read Psalm 103, read Isaiah 53, read Ephesians 2, 2 Corinthians 5, and so on and so on. There are so many passages that are so helpful. We have no excuse when we say, well, I didn't understand that God was so majestic. God has revealed himself to us in the word of God so that we can be well balanced, so that we can, so that we can know about his love. We can know about fear of the Lord, who he is, his characteristics. That's why we have the Bible. We need to read the word of God. God will use his word to create a sense of reverence in us. An, an awe that is, a, is fear of God. If we spend time praying that God would increase our fear of Him and, and not spend any time in the Word, it won't happen. Those are wasted prayers. It, oh God, if only I could get to know you. What's He thinking? He, he's saying, I gave you my Word, man. I revealed myself to you in these pages. If you would read them, you would know who I am. And if you have trouble while you're reading, the Holy Spirit's there to teach you. How foolish it would be for us to say we didn't know if we don't read the Word of God. God has given us everything we need for life and for godliness. And we need to train ourselves in godliness. We need to be godly people. I want to tell you, just, just before we end, I am so proud of the people in this congregation. Even though we're not together today, 
I've been talking to people, I've been talking to the congregation, and I'm hearing all kinds of wonderful stories of how they've been able to help in our community. People, people who are disabled haven't been able to get someone to cut the grass. And, and so a family from Hope for Today Fellowship will show up and cut their, cut their lawn for them. I hope there's no one watching here who has a lot of grass on their property and decides they want to call Hope for Today. But in helping the community, you know, if, you, if, there, if there are people on your street who are having trouble, let's help them. It, it's, it's going to help us grow in godliness. It, it's practicing. It's practice time, everybody. Let's get busy. Let's, let's do things that God would want us to do. Let's do things that God would do. When he says love your neighbor, man, let's show them that we love them. Let's not talk about it. Let's show them. That's a sign of godliness. We're, we're being godlike. Beautiful. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the words you've spoken to us today through the power of your Holy Spirit, the greatest teacher we could ever know. I thank you, Lord, that you've revealed yourself to us in the word. You're not an unknown God. You're a God who's known. You're a God who's alive, a God who's working in us and through us and all around us. Oh, I'm glad we serve a risen Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I, I know there's people watching whose hearts aren't right with you. It, maybe there's even some people who are watching who thought their hearts were right with you, but are realizing more and more as your Holy Spirit convicts them that their hearts aren't right with you, and they need to get their hearts right. They need to get their lives right with God. They need that relationship to be healed. I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit would work in their lives right now. Talk to them, Lord. Talk to me. Talk to all of us. We all have things in our lives that aren't right and need to be taken care of. If you're watching this right now, you're part of the service in the chat, public chat side of your screen, there's a hand, a little hand came up. If, if you push on that, you're raising your hand and you're saying, I want to commit my life to Jesus Christ. I want to be a godly person and I want to follow the Lord. I want to be forgiven of my sin. If that's you, push that button. And then, and then it, it, something else comes up and says, you know, you need prayer. Like, don't just raise your hand. Go to the prayer room. Push that prayer thing. Go to the prayer room. There's, there's Pastor Colin and Pastor Val and myself and, 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 and Trish. We want to pray for you. We want to pray with you. If you're listening today and you, you don't even know Jesus, you've, you've never known Jesus, but you know that you need Jesus in your life because the Holy Spirit's talking to you right now. There's something missing in your life. That's God. He's missing in your life. We've all rejected God. We've all sinned. All have sinned and fallen short of God's glory, His standard. And the Bible says that because we've all sinned, we all deserve death. The wages of sin is death. We all deserve eternal destruction. But God doesn't want us to be eternally destroyed. He wants us to come to him. The Bible says God is, he, he's, he's, not, he's not slow in coming. He's patient. He's patient with us. Because he wants no one to perish. He wants no one to end up in hell. That's why God's taking his time coming back. He wants us all to repent, that all would come to repentance, that all would turn away from their sin and turn to God and, and have that relationship healed up so that we can once again be called sons and daughters of God. If you're here today, you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, push on that button. Raise your hand, push on that button. 
and then go to the prayer room so we can pray for you. We just want to pray for you. We want to help you. Listen to the Holy Spirit talking to you. God, the Holy Spirit, is talking to you. He wants a personal relationship with you. Turn your life to Jesus Christ. Turn away from your sin. That doesn't mean you've got to be perfect. Remember, Paul wasn't perfect. He said, I haven't arrived yet. I haven't got there. None of us are perfect. But if we, if we reach out to Jesus Christ, he says, he says, confess your sin to me. Tell me you're a sinner. Just confess. I, I'm a sinner. I can't save myself. God promises he'll cleanse us. He'll take away all our sin. He'll forgive us and cleanse us. We'll be new. You don't have to be perfect. Thank you, Lord, for, for all of those who put up their hand today. Thank you for those who have never known you, have come to know you. I pray in Jesus' name that you would bless them. You'd pour out your spirit upon them. God, as you go to live inside of them, as you become part of their life, as you become their life, I pray, Lord, that they would make a commitment to follow you and to work at becoming godly, to become godlike, so that the world would see and glorify our Father who is in heaven. Thank you. For those who are struggling in their walk with you, I pray you'd give them strength, you'd give them courage to press on. For those who are, who are weak, for those who are sick, for those who are in, in, in some kind of financial need, some kind of, some kind of crisis, I pray, Lord, that you bless them. Give them peace. Give them comfort. Help them not to worry, but to rely on you, to trust you, to, to, to lean on you. For all those who have lost loved ones recently, over the last six months, to this COVID thing, we pray you'd bless them. Give them comfort and peace in their time of mourning. Father, I know that if we lean on you and trust you, we won't be paranoid. We won't be worried about tomorrow. We can trust you. We can trust you. You are a faithful God. We thank you. Thank you for all these things. We ask them all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.